Breaking news here on CNN Philippines. A massive fire hits a mall in San Jose de Buena Vista town in Antique. Local fire officials told CNN Philippines they received the alarm report of a fire in Gaisano Grand Mall around 5.30 p.m. Thursday. It has so far reached general alarm that is the highest fire alarm category. The blaze is still ongoing and fire trucks from nearby provinces of Iloilo and Aklan have also been deployed to help out. Stay tuned to CNN Philippines for updates on this breaking news story. Our top story today, it's still face shields on for Filipinos at all times for now. That's even as the interagency task force recommended the mandatory wearing of face shields only in enclosed or indoor spaces of hospitals, schools, workplaces, commercial establishments, public transport terminals and places of worship. In a statement, IATF and presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said that while waiting for the president's decision on the matter, the existing policy on the use of face shields remains in effect. Our AC Nichols tells us more. They come in different sizes, colors and styles. For the past six months, Filipinos have learned to live with a face shield. Now President Duterte believes it should only be worn in hospitals. But presidential spokesman Harry Roque says this is not yet final. As I said, po, no, legally speaking, IATF is recommendatory to the president. When the president speaks, then that becomes the policy. But let's wait for an appeal, if one will be large. And it was Senate President Tito Soto who first talked about the president's stand on the face shield in a tweet early Thursday. Another senator said the president asked what other countries use the face shield. Apparently, none of them could name one. And the president himself said, then you don't have to. To wear it, no? So, lahat kami nagtanggalan, kung makikita nyo, nasa video ho yun, nasa gilid bago siya pumasok. Nagtanggalan ho kami lahat ng uh, face shield. Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno was the first to urge the national government to scrap the face shield policy in a statement earlier this month. Kung sa tingin natin na wala naman masyadong epekto, pero sa buhay ng tao, sa kapaligiran, sa buhay ng tao ha, sa hirap ng buhay ngayon, sa tos gas, wag na tayo makapagpabigat. The health department maintains wearing both a face mask and face shield can prevent COVID-19 transmission by as much as 90%. Molecular biologist Father Nicanor Ostriaco also believes people should still wear face shields, particularly in areas experiencing high infection rates. He cites studies saying the face shield can provide an added 9% protection against the deadly virus. I would recommend, uh, you know, in high-risk areas where there is where there is surge, the nine percent may be important. But here in the, in Metro Manila, for example, if you are outside and there's no one around you, I think it is reasonable to say that le you know lowering the the risk by nine percent may be something we are able to tolerate. AC Nichols, CNN Philippines. House Majority Leader Martin Romualdez is considering running for vice president after getting President Rodrigo Duterte's support. On Wednesday, Mr. Duterte said it's a good idea for him to run for VP, but he added he will not push through with it if Romualdez does the same. The president said he will support the lawmaker instead. Romualdez says he has yet to finalize his political plans because he's focused on the administration's legislative agenda. Romualdez adds he's looking to strengthen the alliance between his party, Lakas CMD, and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio's hugpong ng pagbabago. I've not even decided also myself on a national run, but definitely it is uh, uh, no, uh, something that we will be uh, uh, considering and making uh, consultations uh, with our uh, party mates and uh, our constituency. As we look towards the 2022 elections, kung baga, hindi kami maghihiwalay. In fact, uh, we will strengthen our alliance and uh, we will formalize that uh, uh, very soon. Despite President Duterte's endorsement, Romualde says he is confident there will be no conflict between him and his cousin, former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos. Marcos emerged as a possible running mate for the presidential daughter after visiting the mayor in Davao City last month. Romualdez adds the relationship between the Duterte and Marcos families is strong. The lawmaker also shared Senator Aimee Marcos met with Sara Duterte over dinner the other day.
Former Defense Secretary Gilbert Chedoro keeping his eyes on the prize, according to an ally. Former Camarines Sur Representative Rolando Andaya Jr. says Chedoro is focused on his plans and unfazed by President Rodrigo Duterte's support for House Majority Leader Martin Romualdez. Andaya adds the president only showed he is a man of his word. The former lawmaker notes Mr. Duterte promised to support Romualdez before his daughter, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, emerged as a strong presidential contender. That's an old promise. Things have uh, changed dramatically. Uh, Sarah wasn't even in the picture at that time. Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, mga outdated na yung promesa na yun. Uh, probably he's, uh, pinapakita lang ni Presidente Duterte na he's a man of his word, but deep down he knows na hindi yun ang gusto ni Sarah. And Daya adds, Chidoro will again meet with the presidential daughter in Davao City on July 3rd. Two weeks ago, Chidoro flew to Davao to meet with the mayor and get vaccinated against COVID-19. And Daya told CNN Philippines Duterte Carpio and Chidoro will run as independents next year. Former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo hosted a lunch for three members of the Marcos family amid speculation about their political plans for 2022. House Majority Leader Martin Romualdez confirmed the meeting with Arroyo last Monday at her home with his cousins, Senator Aimee Marcos and former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. In a photo making rounds online, Pampanga Representative Juan Miguel Arroyo was also present at the meeting. Romualdez described the lunch as a simple get-together where they discussed their plans. Romualde says Aimee also asked Arroyo for advice on legislative matters and thanked the former president for supporting their family. Romualde is the president of Arroyo's party, Lakas CMD. The Leyte lawmaker and Bong Bong have emerged as potential candidates for vice president in recent weeks. President Rodrigo Duterte said on Wednesday that he would support Romualde should the lawmaker run for vice president. Bong Bong, meanwhile, flew to Davao City last month to meet with Mayor Sara Duterte, who's touted as a possible contender for the presidency. See, um, Senator Aimee was asking for some advice, and then there were these exchanges updating as to what are the plans of, uh, you know, uh, everyone there. It was just another, um, how should I say, get-together uh, and catching up and, and exchanges of ideas and, uh, I guess, soliciting some uh, advice. The Commission on Elections is planning on regulating campaign rallies for the 2022 elections. This is to prevent the spread of COVID-19. COMELEC Commissioner Marlon Casquejo says the COMELEC is looking at allowing political parties to hold limited face-to-face -face campaigns while the public can attend virtually. However, the traditional house-to-house -house campaigning will be prohibited as monitoring compliance of health and safety protocols will be a challenge. Casquejo says the COMELEC is in the process of drafting guidelines for the campaign period, which begins in February 2022.